first asana. There are two kinds of meditation. One meditation is we call uh, samatha, single point of meditation. That actually which is internalized into mental force, mental power, mental energy. Then the impersonal and then the little meditation. Both important, but the impersonal is more important. Because uh, in this is resistance, resistance, and the difficult meditation. And the difficult meditation, according to my own experience, and the difficult meditation really affect your emotions. As I mentioned earlier, awareness. And the difficult meditation really help to well, the deeper awareness, deeper reality. And then, uh, I think, uh, three thousand, over 3,000 years, this country, two foot, one foot or two foot, and then there जो धर्म के अनुसार या परंपरा अनुसार दो सत्य माने जाते हैं समृद्ध सत्य और परमार्थ सत्य सो कौन सा टू ट्रू ट्रूथ सो दिस वन द अल्टीमेट रफली ट्रांसलेशन अल्टीमेट ट्रूथ एंड कन्वेंशनल लेवल ट्रूथ व्हाई development, why sort of develop two truth is things, the reality of things not as appears. The deeper level, the reality is something different. So there is always a gap, appearances and reality. So most of the destructive emotion based on appearances. So in order to uh, or say the, the, in order to tackle this problem, we have to go deeper level of reality. So this, the Buddhist uh, the concept of anatma and atma and uh, within anatma, shunyata. Shunyata means patita sumupanda. So things, shunyata does not mean nothingness. But things there, but the way exist is due to other factor, not by itself. So no independent self-existence, right? like that. So this concept uh, really sort of effect, our, as I mentioned earlier, the negative emotions such as anger. When angry anger comes, this is something independent, absolute target. The understanding, nothing exists by itself. Now quantum physicists also they say nothing exists by objectively. Much different on observer. Now up to now, quantum physicists uh, they already know nothing exists objectively. Then observer become important. Now what is observer? Then difficult. The modern scientist not yet sort of the answer. Not very clear idea. In India, over 3,000 years, the concept of anat atma, atma come. Uh, then also later, Buddha uh, developed anatma theory. So we need more study. And anatma theory, uh, not completely, because of no self. No, self is there. Nobody can deny that. But anatma theory, selflessness, is self there, not as appears. So, so the Buddhist particularly Madhimika philosophy, uh, you know, Nagarjuna's philosophy. Oh, wonderful. Now, many scientists, uh, 
is it is really i said admire the ancient indian these great thinkers sort of view really one time the raja ramana the india's uh, nuclear physicist uh, he once told me uh, quantum physics in the west something new but in this country over 2000 years that concept already developed so like that these are uh, you see as a student study this remain there on book just intellectual level then not much useful firstly awareness uh the this this kasa or awareness or understanding from hearing that's not much effective you simply say oh uh, this uh, sort of professor this scholar say that this say uh, that and this book mention that just copy from these of different sources then on that basis on that knowledge further investigate by yourself uh use different source or this say that this say not like that so then uh, make a comparison and investigate reasons that is the uh, truly analytical meditation you see the second level of awareness through analytical meditation or oh. That, that brings conviction now the certain thing which you fully convinced now that constantly or say they meditate or familiarize then eventually effect our wrong view all negative emotion based on wrong view ultimately related with ignorance ignorance there are different level but the final deeper deepest ignorance is ignorance which grasping things as appears that's the basis of all destructive emotion the constructive emotion not based on that so that's that makes differences so therefore destructive emotion can eliminate uh true constructive emotion increase so therefore analytical meditation vipassana is very very important just a meditation close your eye remember like that is something like tranquilizer for a short moment ah uh, you feel peace then open your mind open your eye and then look problems or then still problem there <laughs> so the uh, uh, just mere meditation is something like or uh, take holiday when uh, some picnic at that moment no longer problem but when you return your home problem still there so so more effective is analyze the problem itself uh, not avoid but thinking deeper way then uh, uh, the problem will not disturb your mind because realize or understand the very nature of the problem okay you, next question yes now here koti koti pranam his holiness to the dalai lama i am Girish Sharma, a retired professor of this Guwahati University in philosophy. I have a very simple question. Today you have said that you are the messenger of ancient Indian knowledge. Also you say that I am the longest guest of the government of India. Also you say you are a Buddhist monk. My simple question is, would that day will come very soon when you will declare that you are a good Indian? and india is my country thank you yes uh and also since last few years i also you see uh, describe myself as a 
son of India. Because a few years ago, say, some Chinese, uh, including overseas Chinese, some sort of media come to see me. And then one Chinese uh, reporter or media asked me, why you are saying you are son of India? Then uh, I just explained, my mind, my brain, each part of my brain, each cell of my brain, filled by Nalanda thought. Uh, Nalanda thought come from India. And then this physical survived over 50 years, this body survived by Indian dal, Indian chapati, uh, Indian rice. Therefore, physically, mentally, I am son of India. I explained. It's true. Oh, I explained. Then, you see, those uh, as a media people seem to see, understand. That's true. That's reality. So then, I think the relation between Tibetan and Indian is a relation between Guru and Chela. So, very, very emotionally, very deep our relation, not just economy reasons or political reasons, mainly spiritual reasons. One Tibetan great or city spiritual leader, a scholar, I think 14th or 15th century. Now, you see, he expressed till light of India reached Tibet, Tibet in spite land of snow, bright and white, but still dark. When light from India, or light of India, reached Tibet, then Tibet become bright. It is true. As I mentioned earlier, as far as this sophisticated Nalanda tradition is concerned, I think the Chela's land more brighter than Guru's land. <laughs> okay, the good news is that uh, we've been told we have time for one more question. Ritimoni? Your Holiness, with a kind heart and a peaceful life, we would like to know the life of respect and happiness. I think, dear my young sister, this age, you see, I think basic human nature more alive. Uh, to materialistic oriented education, eventually that value, that feeling becoming more dominant. Right. Dominant. Huh? So now please, you Eventually, you see, you carry your education and join some modern school. Uh, uh, then please pay more attention about basic human value, which you, till now, I think very fresh there. Actually, now last, uh, I think, uh, I think almost two decades, uh, we, or say they, uh, we already sort of uh, committed for promotion of human value. In that respect, with that, the, we have some Buddhist, or say the teaching, uh, about 300 volumes, except I think 10, 15 volume that's translated from Chinese. Otherwise, all uh, 300 volumes translated from India. Now, content, content, content of these 300 volumes, we can divide three parts. Number one, science. Mainly, science of mind. And the science of physical also there, 
but some are rubbish. <laughs> For example, the cosmology, some of Buddhist sort of texts like Abhidhamoko Shakarika, and also some Kala Chakra sort of Tantra mentioned about the world, world flat in the center, Mount Miru, and then the sun and the moon, more the same size and the same level, go like that. So these are nonsense. I publicly reject it now. No longer believe these things. However, the science of mind is concerned. I think wonderful. So that consider as a part of science. Then another sort of subject, philosophy. As I mentioned earlier, two tooth. Now, uh, so that uh, like. Uh, the uh, Four Noble Truth is directly linked with Buddhism. But True Truth is simply you see, trying to explain the reality. So these are something useful. So oh, second part is philosophy. The third part is religion. That is Buddhism. And then uh, the last few years, Emory University in America and also some Stanford uh, and also Tata Institution. They also now uh, fully committed researching so how to put in secular education about these secular ethics. So actually I think uh, as a matter of fact end of this month April we are, we are going to take one meeting to discuss uh, how to, so drafting the secular ethics which can fit in the secular education field. So I think mm, within, I think, uh, I think this year some rough drafting about secular education, secular ethics, uh, I think may be ready so then eventually you can enjoy uh, these things. So I think only India have the ability or opportunity to combine modern education, modern technology, all these modern facility or modernity uh, actually provide physical comfort not mental comfort. So mental comfort, ancient Indian knowledge, how to tackle our emotion. This brings inner peace, uh, the mental comfort. So only this country have the ability to combine modern Sarvasati value and the ancient your value so that physically comfortable, mentally peaceful. Some of my friends, some American, billionaire, very rich, and some chancellor, very well known, famous, and educated, and educated, but as a person, unhappy. So, material value fail to bring inner peace, inner happiness. So therefore, I think uh, you young uh, Indian, my sister, now you will have more bright future. So think like that. That's my view. Okay, thank you little lady. One more Ritimani, one more. Your Holiness, First of all, I pay my reverence to you for your wise talk today. At the end of the First World War, from 1914 to 1918, a great American poet who became an Englishman wrote a poem, The Westland. 
he called the world a wasteland and in order to make it a fertile and habitable land he prescribed the indian philosophical words datta dadham daimatam datta charity dadham karuna as you have said or compassion and self control so do you still believe that the land of the ganges can still save the world from the havoc of war by the three things datta dadham daimata thank you so yes, i have there's one opportunity is to visit the khasa kanya kumari a trip of south india from where the swami ji has went to america and uh, i think most probably in chicago his uh, set up eventually i think due to his sort of idea and his sort of effort world parliament of religion uh, set up so i think such movement i think really very wise and cuz of far sighted uh, but unfortunately i said that i said the organization uh, not much active so i have been i participated few occasion is a world parliament religion uh, then uh, the uh, the last meeting uh, i think in america they said they come to uh, see me and the invitation invite me then they told me since the previous sort of meeting in australia i think in melbourne the world parliament of religion i mentioned i expressed that oh this body is very important but it seems sleepy nothing active <laughs> so then then you see that uh, delegation you see came to see me because you, see, you mentioned like that so now we are really uh, making effort to become more active so then then i sort of uh, uh, accepted but unfortunately then on around that that time i got sick so some medication so like that i think indians one swami thinking uh long term and he felt america is actually leading nation of free world so he set up that so such things uh i think uh, traditionally uh i think some great thinkers really uh, from this country i think really makes effort i feel that thank you ladies and gentlemen that's all the time we have for this interaction for this i'm sure we would have wanted it to be longer but as i said constraints of time but his holiness with due respect and i at the risk of being killed by my vc but i hope to be under your protection on behalf of all the women present here in the audience i would like to ask you one question how do you have such beautiful skin at this age I think you know better. Oh, uh, how to keep uh beautiful sort of skin survey. But what is your secret? Kasa. Uh so some occasion uh when I give talk and some people ask me uh in spite old age you say you looks or me I mean they ask me you looks like uh, uh in spite now over 80 years old but the physical face particularly the face appears like 70 like that so they asked me 
what is secret. Then I usually respond, oh, that's my secret. I don't want to share. Oh. <laughs> oh. Then, then, then more seriously, I sort of telling, telling them, there's nothing. Most important, peace of mind. Exactly. Mm. So la ladies also, I think I usually see uh, half teasing. Uh, beauty, uh, is internal beauty is more important than exactly. external beauty. <laughs> so many years ago, I think now 50 years ago, one Tibetan official, monk official, uh, really trusted one. So he eventually, he disrobed. So then I tease him, oh, your wife, not that much attractive. <laughs> I tease him. Then his answer is, yes, physically not much, but very nice, uh, how's it uh, uh, Internal beauty is immense. So then I have nothing to say. <laughs> so, and then furthermore, uh, in ancient time, when human being, very, at a very small kasota, kasota number, population, then almost no concept of family, but remain group, group, group like that, like a chimpanzee or some other animal. Then gradually, population increased. Also, farming system started. So then the concept of my land, my possession, come. So then some, how is it, because of the thief, or these things now happen. So concept of leadership developed. At that time, no education, so in order to become leadership, physical strength. So male dominance then come. Even you see religious tradition, also you see some sort of impact on the society, male dominance, you see, come. Then eventually education develop. Education brings more equal in modern time, including this country. Uh, like Indra Gandhiji or Gold Mayor in Israel and then uh, Mrs. Taiser in England and now today German Chancellor. Wonderful. So now modern time, now education brings more equal. Now as I mentioned earlier, education, existing education not adequate. So we must make every effort to promote human deeper value, that's human compassion. In that respect, female, biologically, uh, more sensitivity about others' suffering, others' pain. So now time come, female should take more active role for promotion of human compassion on human, humanity level. I really feel that. My own case, my first teacher of love or compassion is my mother, not my t other teacher. Like that. So therefore, I feel the female biologically uh, more stronger feeling about compassion. Therefore, a female uh, should take more active role regarding promotion of compassionate century, compassionate humanity. Thank you, Your Holiness. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we approach the winding moments of this morning's program, may I now call upon Dr. Aurobh Jyoti Chaudhary, Dean Academic and Registrar in charge of uh, KK Handik uh, State Open University to please present the vote of thanks. His Holiness, Honorable Vice-Chancellor, Krishnakanta Handik State Open University, 
শ্রীযুত জটিন হাজরিকা চেয়ারম্যান এল বি এস ফাউন্ডেশন ডিস্টিংগুইস গেস্ট স্টুডেন্ট ফ্রেন্ডস লেডিজ এন্ড জেন্টলম্যান প্রেজেন্ট ফর আস ইট ইজ নট এ প্রিভিলেজ ইট ইজ এ হিস্ট্রি ফর আস ইট ইজ এজ ইফ দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড হ্যাজ টফ ফর আস ফর এ মোমেন্ট at a time when greed has poisoned man's soul has barricaded the life we hate has goose taped us into misery and blood said when we have developed speed but shut ourselves in we find a new his holiness a new philosophy and consolidation of our commitment towards peace love compassion and freedom the honorable vice chancellor of this university has put before us the philosophy of social responsibility we in the krishna kanto handic state of an university are committed to it and today we would like to redeem our pledge for education beyond barriers in the presence of his holiness we are small and ordinary at the moment but we aspire to be extraordinary and for that we seek the blessings of his holiness and the cooperation of the entire house we are thankful and grateful to to the authority of the guwahati university and the lbs foundation for making this event a success with this i would like to redeem our privilege we would like to redeem our commitment to that of the philosophy of education beyond barriers thank you very much ladies and gentlemen i'm sure that today the person we walked into this auditorium as will not be the same person living now we are enriched we are enlightened and we are blessed the words of his holiness will stay with us no doubt but it will now be upon us to spread what we learned from his holiness this morning it is within us to be compassionate it is within us to be loving and it is within us to spread peace nothing not money not power not diplomacy but only love and compassion makes this world go round may i request everyone to please give me a thunderous standing ovation and your holiness please we want to see you back in guwahati soon no he's not listening 